the Chinese economy is close to collapse. COVID has indeed affected everyone in various ways. Some have lost loved ones, while others have lost their jobs. COVID has affected not only individuals, but also nations' financial systems, and China is among such nations as its economic GDP growth rate is expected to fall to 0.3%, which can be considered a brief recession starting Q1 2023. So, let us discuss the factors that destroyed the world's second-largest economic system and the strategies required to recover from it. In recent weeks, China's economy has struggled. According to recent data, the Chinese economy is already in a slump. The country is dealing with record-high inflation, layoffs, trillions of dollars disappearing overnight, fraudulent activity, and a slew of other issues that are contributing to the country's economic decline. The Chinese Communist Party tried to keep the disaster quiet, but the truth has already come to light. Let's go over these factors. COVID lockdown has paused economic activities. The Chinese economy is slowing as it adjusts to a punishing zero-COVID policy and weakening global demand. Zero-COVID is causing havoc. COVID outbreaks in several cities, including manufacturing hubs like Shenzhen and Tianjin, have harmed economic activity in a variety of industries. Individuals also refrain from spending money on items such as food, beverages, retail and tourism, which puts a strain on key services. The lockdown halted both life and commercial activity in Shanghai as it had in Wuhan two years before. Expressways, container ports and other distribution infrastructure stopped working across a large area, effectively paralyzing the Changjiang Delta, the heart of China's economy and the main reason for the downfall of the world's second-largest economy. Another factor contributing to China's economic decline is that recent reports have disclosed that the People's Republic of China is meddling with Chinese economic data. Behind fabricated figures, the entire Chinese banking system is collapsing. According to six anonymous Chinese bank executives, government-owned banks have offered free loans. Government-owned banks make loans at the same interest rate as deposits. The CCP has been pushed to manipulate the data because no one wants to take out loans. The People's Bank of China was recently caught off guard. Four key policy interest rates are being used to stimulate the economy. In addition, the PBOC reduced the prime rate on one-year loans for the second time in 2022. Property developers will also be given special loans worth 200 billion yuan $29.2 billion by Chinese authorities. Poor real estate activity and a general lack of confidence in the housing market have undeniably slowed growth. This has had a significant impact on the economy as property and other businesses that make a significant contribution to it make up to a third of China's GDP. Purchasers have refused to pay mortgage payments on incomplete buildings, and some are skeptical that their homes will ever be finished. Mortgage payments on 301 projects in 91 cities have reportedly ceased. The demand for new homes is declining, reducing the requirement for imports of construction materials. Despite Beijing's efforts to support the real estate market, home prices have fallen by even more than 20% of the total in several cities this year. With real estate developers under pressure, analysts believe the government will need to do much more to rebuild trust in the real estate market. The Chinese real estate market is one of the most inflated in history. Nobody wants to watch their money deteriorate due to inflation over time. As a result, the average person may consider investing in the stock market, but Chinese stocks are extraordinarily risky. Companies like Didi, China's largest ride-hailing company, have seen their valuations plummet by 75 to 90 percent simply because of the Chinese Communist Party. The entire $1 trillion education sector vanished overnight as the government turned what was previously a private industry into a public one. 
the Chinese government has remained reliant on the real estate market for growth in the economy while failing to implement effective steps to avoid property bubbles. This has ended up causing real estate prices to skyrocket, creating a wealth disparity that rivals that of the United States. On the other hand, more than 90% of Chinese households now have their own home. Given that real estate accounts for two-thirds of household wealth, any significant drop in property values is bound to cause public outrage. If the Chinese government fails to take decisive action on major property developers' bankruptcies and the issue of stalled work on pre-sold flats, which has caused owners to refuse to pay their mortgages, the Chinese real estate market will cool even further and become chaotic. A two-year-long regulatory crackdown on China's tech titans isn't helping matters. Tencent and Alibaba both reported revenue drops in the most recent quarter, with Tencent's profits falling by 50% and Alibaba's net income falling by half. Hundreds of thousands of employees have lost their jobs, contributing to a jobs crisis in which one in every five people aged 16 to 24 is unemployed. In the long run, this could harm China's productivity and growth. Investors are also noticing a shift in Beijing, with some of the country's most successful private companies coming under increased scrutiny. Foreign investors are withdrawing money from state-owned enterprises, which appear to be gaining favor. SoftBank of Japan withdrew a large sum of money from Alibaba, whilst Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is attempting to sell its stake in electrical vehicle maker BYD. Tencent has withdrawn more than $7 billion in investments in the second half of 2022. Furthermore, the United States is cracking down on Chinese companies listed on the American Stock Exchange. Some investment plans are being postponed and some foreign companies are seeking to expand production in other countries, according to S&P Global Ratings in a recent note. The world has grown accustomed to the fact that Beijing may not be as open for business as it once was. Among other things, population decline is also a major contributor to the economic downturn because fewer people means fewer workers. The population decline is the result of China's restrictions on the number of children that people can have. The one-child policy, which limited Chinese families to one child, went into effect in 1979. When the government realized that its population was dwindling, it took action. To drastically change things, the two-child policy was enacted in 2016. Citizens are still haunted by the one-child policy, and as a result, China is on track to experience a significant population decline. Extreme weather is having a long-term impact on China's industries. In August 2022, a severe heat wave was followed by a drought in the southwestern province of Sichuan and the central belt city of Chongqing. As air conditioning demand increased, it overloaded the electricity grid in a region that is almost entirely dependent on hydropower. Factories, including major manufacturers like Apple's Foxconn and Tesla, were forced to cut hours or close entirely. According to China's Statistics Bureau, profits in the iron and steel industry fell by more than 80% in the first seven months of 2022 compared to the same period last year. If you're living outside China, you may believe that you're immune to China's demise. But the truth is, the device on which you're watching this video was most likely manufactured in China. China is a manufacturing superpower, accounting for roughly 28% of global manufacturing. A sudden collapse in China's economy will put a significant strain on global manufacturing. Countries around the world will see much higher prices as the supply of goods decreases. Europe will bear the brunt of this. The European Union is reliant on China for nearly all of its metal. China supplies roughly 75 to 100 percent of the EU's total metal supply. 19 of the 30 critical raw materials are primarily sourced from China. Magnesium is one example of this. China supplies 98 percent of the magnesium to the EU. Consider what will happen if 70 to 90 percent of the metal supply suddenly disappears. Commodity prices will skyrocket, 
putting additional strain on the EU and other countries. If you watch the news, you must know that Beijing announced a 1 trillion yuan, $203 billion or 180 billion pound plan to enhance business, infrastructure, and real estate in August 2022. However, officials can do much more to stimulate spending to achieve development objectives and create employment. This includes increased infrastructure spending, easing lending conditions for home buyers, property developers, and local governments, as well as tax incentives for individuals. Mr. Kuis said, The government's approach to the country's economic weakness has been relatively minimal compared to what we've seen in prior economic downturns. In order to cope with the situation, China must take precautionary measures to avoid collapse and maintain its position. China should focus on exports rather than housing schemes. Instead of closing everything, it should use a smart lockdown. The government must enact policies that encourage the use of human labor. What strategies do you think China needs to opt for? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more updates. Until next time, goodbye.